What is a physial fracture? A physial fracture, also known as a growth plate fracture, is a type of bone fracture that occurs at the cartilaginous growth plate in pediatric bones. These fractures are unique to children and adolescents due to the presence of growth plates, which allow bones to grow in length. Physial fractures can disrupt normal bone growth and should be carefully diagnosed and treated to prevent long-term complications. During infancy, the epiphysis consists mainly of cartilage, serving as a shock-absorbing structure. As the child matures and bone ossification progresses, greater forces are transmitted through the bone, increasing the risk of fractures. This lecture helps clinicians to prevent common mistakes, such as misdiagnosing physial fractures as a sprain and failing to schedule orthopedic follow-up. Salter-Harris Classification Growth plate cartilage undergoes hypertrophy and calcification to facilitate bone lengthening. This proliferation zone creates a vulnerable area in the bone, increasing the susceptibility to fractures. The widely adopted Salter-Harris classification, introduced by Canadian physicians Salter and Harris, categorizes fractures into five types, with higher numbers indicating a greater risk of growth impairment. A helpful mnemonic for recalling the Salter-Harris classification system is Salter, which corresponds to the plane of fracture, as illustrated below. S stands for slipped or separated physis, seen in Salter-Harris type 1 fractures. A stands for above physis, seen in Salter-Harris type 2 fractures. L stands for below physis, seen in Salter-Harris type 3 fractures. T stands for through physis, seen in Salter-Harris type 4 fractures. R stands for crushed physis, seen in Salter-Harris type 5 fractures. Common locations of physial fracture are Fingers, 40%, distal radius, 18%, distal tibia, 11%, and distal fibula, 7%. The prevalence of Salter-Harris fracture types is as follow. Salter-Harris type 2, 75%, type 3, 10%, type 4, 10%, type 1, 5%, and type 5, less than 1%. Salter-Harris type 1 fractures. Salter-Harris type 1 fractures may not be readily visible on x-rays. Radiographic findings may range from normal to slight growth plate cartilage asymmetry or complete displacement through the physis, that is, slipped epiphysis. Physical examination is crucial. Any child with tenderness upon palpation at the growth plate level should be managed as if they have a fracture, even without specific radiographic evidence. Salter-Harris type 1 is more common in younger children due to the thicker growth plate and periosteum. An exception is a slipped capital femoral epiphysis, which occurs in older and often heavier children, often manifesting as knee pain rather than specific hip pain. Generally, treatment for Salter-Harris type 1 fractures involves close reduction and cast or splint immobilization. If there is true displacement at the physis, or suspicion of slipped capital femoral epiphysis, consultation with orthopedic specialists is warranted. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is a Salter-Harris type 1 injury involving the proximal femoral physis, which results in eventual slippage of the proximal femoral epiphyses in relation to the metaphysis. It occurs in older and often heavier children, often manifesting as knee pain rather than specific hip pain. It's crucial to emphasize that slipped capital femoral epiphysis is a serious condition that requires prompt consultation and surgical intervention. Delayed treatment can lead to severe complications and long-term hip problems.
Salter Harris Type 2 Fractures Salter Harris Type 2 Fracture is the most common of the Salter Harris Fractures. In these fractures, the fracture line extends through the metaphysis and the growth plate without involvement of the epiphysis. There is no involvement of the epiphysis. The resulting metaphysial fragment is referred to as a Thurston Holland fragment. Notably, the distal tibia is at particularly high risk of growth arrest in the context of Salter Harris type fractures, correlating with millimeters of initial displacement. Metaphysial corner fracture, also known as bucket handle fracture, is a kind of Salter Harris type 2 fractures. Corner fracture is usually seen in children less than 2 years old and is suggestive of non accidental injury for children, that is, child abuse. Salter Harris type 3 and type 4 fractures. Salter Harris type 3 fracture involves a fracture through the epiphysis and physis. Salter Harris type 4 fracture involves a fracture through the metaphysis, physis, and epiphysis. In Salter Harris types 3 and 4, the fracture line extends through the joint surface, which places these fractures at a higher risk of chronic joint problems. Surgical treatment is usually needed for type 3 and 4 fractures. Salter Harris Type 5 Fractures Salter Harris Type 5 fractures result from axial compression. The initial x ray may not show any fracture pattern but may indicate significant soft tissue swelling. The knee and ankle are most often involved. Fewer than 1% of Salter Harris fractures are type 5. It is often misdiagnosed and carries a poor prognosis because the diagnosis is made retrospectively, often after the occurrence of growth arrest. Management of Salter Harris Fractures Salter Harris Type 1 and most Type 2 fractures are treated with closed reduction and cast or splint immobilization. The reduction should be performed carefully to avoid damage to or grating of the physis on any metaphysial bone fragments. Management of all displaced physial fractures necessitates consultation with a pediatric orthopedic specialist for reduction, splinting, and ongoing care. Type 3 and 4 fractures usually require open reduction and internal fixation. When performing open reduction and internal fixation in type 3 fractures, it is crucial to avoid crossing or damaging the growth plate or physis. Take-home message Palpable tenderness at the growth plate level should be managed as a fracture, even if x-ray results are negative. Salter Harris type 1 and most type 2 fractures are treated with closed reduction and cast or splint immobilization. Slipped capital femoral epiphysis is a severe form of type 1 fracture which requires immediate orthopedics consultation and surgical intervention. Any growth plate fracture displaying displacement should prompt consultation with a pediatric orthopedic specialist. Salter Harris type 3 and 4 fractures typically affect the joint surface, necessitating the need for open reduction and internal fixation. A Salter Harris type 5 fracture is often diagnosed retrospectively, after the occurrence of growth arrest. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.